We're going to take a look at Miles Davis on Columbia from 1955 to 1965. The reason I'm doing it in this order is that there's a lot of albums on Columbia. In fact, there's 30 years. Um, his career on Columbia spans from around 1955, 56 to 1985. Uh, so it's best to break it up so that the video is not too long and monotonous. So uh, yeah, let's check them out right now. So first up is Round About Midnight. Um, this album was recorded in 1955 um, for the Prestige label. It was the final one for that label. But um, when Miles signed to um, Columbia, it was released uh, in 1956. So it's technically the first Columbia Miles Davis album. This is the Legacy Edition. Um, this one has uh, some extras on it. It's got a concert um, from 1956 and uh, February 56 so it's around the same ballpark time um, yeah so this is um, remastered by Columbia back in the um, late 90s they did a great job um, with the uh, Miles remasters um, they really brought the sound to the fore and um, yeah so Good album. Um, it's got um, Round Midnight on it. Uh, bye Bye Blackbird. Uh, Daryl Stockham. Two bass hit. A couple of bonus tracks on this one as well. Um, a couple, uh, actually four bonus tracks. But the disc is actually the same as the um, standard edition. And this one is um, from 2001. So it's the same remaster. Uh, there you have it. Yeah, it's a good album. Um, it was only a kind of a, a kind of a taster for what was to come. Miles ahead. This was his first um, joint venture with um, Gil Evans. So there's um, big band arrangements here. This is actually a fine album. Um, really is. Uh, a masterpiece I guess, um, very accomplished. Uh, Miles plays a flugelhorn on this which is a kind of bigger version of a trumpet. Um, the highlights here are Springsville, uh, The Duke, that's fantastic, um, Blues for Pablo, New Rumba. Um, again there's some extra tracks from the sessions. Uh, this was released in 1957 uh, and uh, this is the 1997 um, remaster. This was a cover of the album in certain territories. Milestones. This is a great album. Um, I really like this one. Um, another masterpiece. And um, it's got. Um, Sid's a head on it, which is a long piece. I think Miles plays piano on that. Two bass hit, Milestones, great Davis composition, straight note chaser. Uh, again, there's some extra tracks on this. This is 2001 uh, remaster. 58 sessions um, featuring Stella by Starlight. Uh, this is an old Columbia jazz masterpieces. Um, collection. Um, this was also released um, as bonus tracks on the Kind of Blue box set and it all had a different um, uh, sleeve on it. But uh, yeah, it's a bit of an oddity. Um, it's, the, the tracks have appeared on different uh, collections so uh, yeah, nothing really to write home about. Um, I like the version of Stella by Starlight here in Love for Sale. Miles Davis at Newport, 1958. Um, Newport Jazz Festival is a very important jazz festival up in the uh, US. It's also been um, carried out in other um, countries. Um, 
countries. Uh, this was released actually in 1964, but um, I, I, I brought these out in kind of chronological order of the actual content and not the release dates, which I think is a lot easier. That's the way I have my collection of my old. Um, straight Note Chasers on this, Fran Dance, Two Bass Hit, Bye Bye Blackbird. All standards, um, bashed out in the bebop fashion. Um, jazz at the Plaza, Miles Davis Sextet. It says Volume 1 here. Um, again, this is from 2001. Um, good album. Um, this was actually released in 1973, but um, it's from 1958, um, September. Um, features the classic um, lineup here of John Coltrane, Cannonball, Adderley, uh, Bill Evans, Paul Chambers, Jimmy Cobb. Yeah, so great album. Uh, Porky and Bess. This was released in 1969. Again, another um, orchestra um, led um, album under the direction of Gil Evans. Um, this is obviously George Gershwin's uh, music. Um, this was a pretty popular album at the time as well. Uh, so, um, if you like that kind of thing. Um, certainly wouldn't be my favourite Miles Davis album. Um, yeah, still nice to have. And then there was a kind of blue. This was released in 1959. This was a kind of a new approach to jazz, modal jazz. Um, this is classed as one of the greatest jazz albums of all time, and rightly so. It's mesmerizing. And uh, there is five tracks on it. Um, there's an extra track here, Flamenco Sketches. This is the uh, 1997 um, remaster. It's been <laughs> released um, in all kinds of packaging at the moment. Um, Julian Adderley is on this, uh, John Coltrane, Wynton Kelly, Bill Evans, Paul Chambers, Jimmy Cobb. Um, yeah, so this is, you know, if you have one Miles Davis album, this is the one to get uh, because uh, it's, it's great. Sketches of Spain. This is another collaboration with Gil Evans. Um, kind of explores um, music of the Mediterranean. Um, again, orchestrations here. Um, it's pretty groundbreaking for its time. Music is quite complex and dense. Um, it has the Concierto de Aranuas. Um, I think by uh, Villa Lobos, but um, yeah, it really is good. Um, but it's, I wouldn't call it jazz as such, it's more kind of touching on classical. Yeah, someday my prince will come. Um, this is um it's not a bad album. Um, you know, it's just Miles was kinda of looking for um a new band, I think around nineteen sixty. And uh Coltrane was uh, going off to do his own thing. So this was released in nineteen sixty one. Um a good track here I like is uh Teo. Um Yeah, it's good. Not one I listen to very often. Uh, you know, there's better Miles Davis albums than this. Um, he was still playing the standards at this stage, We're playing live. Miles Davis in person, Friday and Saturday nights at the Black Hawk. Um, complete. This is great. It really is a great box set. Um, you've got um, Wynton Kelly, piano, Jimmy Cobb, drums, Paul Chambers, bass. Um, Hank Mobley, tenor saxophone on this. Um, it was recorded in 1961, and uh, it's a it's a great album. Uh, I really like it. Um, again, 
remastering is great. Columbia did a great job. Um, the only thing I would fault about the package is that the same text is in both CDs. Um, that's because um, you can buy them as single volumes, I guess. But uh, certainly worth having. Essential. The uh, Carnegie Hall concert. Um, May 19th, 1961. This was released in 1962. Again, Hank Mobley, uh, Wynton Kelly, Paul Chambers, Jimmy Cobb. And then there's the Gil Evans part of it. Um, there's 21 piece orchestra. It's a double. And uh, some good stuff on here. Um, it's got parts of um, um, sketches of Spain on there. And then some stuff from um, kind of blue. And. Um, yeah, it's good. Uh, great album. Hi at Night. Okay, uh, this is kind of a blooper in the Davis um, catalogue on Columbia because um, it's a, the last collaboration he did with um, Gil Evans and it's flawed in many ways because um, there wasn't enough substance in it. Um, the sessions were just a little bit botched. Um, but the record company released it anyway. Um, and Miles went crazy over that. Um, yeah, but it's a kind of a transition in some ways because um, there's some new players on this, some new young players. Um, it's kind of got the Latin feel to it, you know, the bossa nova. Uh, but it's 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 kind of easy listening. Uh, not, definitely not his best. An improvement is Seven Steps to Heaven. Um, I like this album a lot. Um, I like uh, Basing Street Blues. Um, so near, so far. I love that. Joshua, that's a great track. Um, here we have George Coleman on tenor saxophone and Herbie Hancock, the legend, on piano. Victor Feldman on piano on some of the tracks. Ron Carter on bass. Um, Tony Williams on drums. Uh, you'll find out more about these two guys later. Uh, Frank Butler drums, um, yeah. This is a good one, I like this. Um, it's very entertaining, I, I just like listening to it, I like the sound of the album. Yeah, it's good. Miles Davis in Europe. Um, this was recorded um, at the Antibes Jazz Festival. Um, fine album actually. Um, this has the um, more or less the core of the um, second great quintet here. Um, Tony Williams on drums, Ron Carter bass, Herbie Hancock on piano, George Coleman is on tenor sax. Um, yeah, it's a good album. It's uh, released in 1963. Um, and uh, yeah, recorded in 63. On TV Jazz Festival is a famous festival. I've been there a few times myself in the last 20 years. I see the Key Jarrett Trio, so three times there. Yeah. Well, I was in Tokyo. Um, obviously in Tokyo. <laughs> um, this album, he has Sam Rivers on tenor saxophone. Uh, it's a good album, I like it. Um, if I rebel, my funny Valentine. So what? Walking again, the standards and some of his own stuff. Um, this was actually released in 1969, but it's from July 1964. Um, I think it was only released in Japan at the time. I'm not 100%. Um, so there you go. Yeah. Um. Miles in Berlin. Um, this one is another one from that era, um, only this time it's the same band, only Wayne Shorter is on uh, tenor saxophone and then these guys stayed together for a few years uh, as a collective and they recorded some of the greatest albums of the 1960s. Uh, this is recorded in Berlin in 1964 and... Uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good album. I like it. It was released in 65. There you 
Ja. My Funny Valentine, Miles in Concert. This was February 1964. Um, this was also released as a double CD. Um, going back a bit. Um, that's a complete concert. Um, because Miles Davis 4 and more recorded live in concert is actually this part of the same gig. And uh, well, this was released in uh, 1966. And finally, we have Miles Davis ESP. Uh, this is a studio album with um, Herbie Hancock, Ron Carter, Wayne Shorter, and Tony Williams. Uh, classic group. Really, really good stuff on this. Um, I like this. It's uh, quite lively and uh, a great album. So, uh, thanks for watching this video and be sure to tune in for Volume 2. Take care. Thanks for watching.